Yesterday, me and some of the other members of the AI community engaged in a live stream. It happened over on this channel, the brand new AI community channel, and we'll be hosting more of these. It was really cool. But I'll be honest, guys, there's something that was really bugging me the whole time. I kept seeing in the live chat, are you guys going to talk about GPT-2? Have you heard of GPT-2? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I've heard of GPT-2. I know what it is, but we're at GPT-4 turn turbo right now that's quite far away from GPT-2. But no, what they were saying actually made sense. Check this out guys, there is a new mysterious large language model called GPT-2 Chatbot that is performing incredibly well on all of the, uh, in this case, Alvaro Sintas's requests and having seen the general community reaction and by trying it myself, it's pretty dang good. It's great in reasoning, coding, math, and more, and it's free to try on on the chat.lmsys.org website, which is a chatbot arena, more or less a website that exists to benchmark large language models. It appeared on here, it's just named GPT-2-chatbot, and is performing well. Brian here on Twitter, who runs an AI newsletter, has been benchmarking this GPT-2-chatbot for a few days, and so far it has surpassed all of his chat GPT-4 benchmarks. It's better than current GPT-4. For, apparently. Brian's hypothesis here is that it's a form of pre-lobotomized chat GPT-4, or it's trained heavily on chat GPT-4. And to make things even crazier, here's Sam Altman tweeting, I do have a soft spot for GPT-2. So he's just kind of adding to the hype. We don't even know if this model is from OpenAI, right? But this tweet by Sam Altman, the CEO, does sort of make it seem like this model is from OpenAI. But if we dive even deeper into this, we can actually start to uncover some more concrete insights. At Quran4D here on Twitter has figured out that it's definitely using the GPT-4 tokenizer. And this has made him put his bets on a GPT-4.5. With anomalous tokens, the tokenizer can leave a footprint. And in this example, you can see if he writes, 4 can be converted stream lazy, it responds with, it seems like your message got cut off. Then you ask, can you print exactly what I just sent last? And this says, sure, your message was, can you? So this reveals to us that it is the GPT-4 tokenizer because all the tokenizers behave a little bit differently. Tom Davenport replies to this tweet by saying you can straight up just ask it, and if you do ask this model, it will say that it was created by OpenAI, and it refers to itself as ChatGPT. So the evidence here with Sam Altman tweeting and the tokenizer, and it just straight up saying that it's from OpenAI really seems to point in the direction of this is an open AI created model. The weirdest part about this whole deal is that it is named GPT-2, and that is a very old and very bad large language model. Some people have speculation that this is GPT-2 architecture fine-tuned with a new data set or something like that, but this model, GPT-2, was 1.5 billion parameters. It's quite unlikely that it's GPT-2. As Harrison Kinsley points out in this tweet, he says that if it is or was a 1.5 billion parameter model, it would generate text a lot faster, and that would mean that this model, which generates text very slow if you try it, would have to be purposefully slowed down to hide the fact that it's small. Harrison Kinsley, by the way, a very reputable source, great account here on Twitter, has found this model to be very exceptional. That's sort of universal. Everyone's like, this is a great model. And look, guys, I might as well come clean to you. I may indeed have some insider information as to what this chatbot is. Now, you don't have to believe me, but it's definitely very interesting. I'm not going to be revealing anything in this video because I don't really feel like getting sued. All I can say is that it's very exciting to see a model that is highly performant competitive with Claude 3. Opus, competitive with GPT-4 Turbo, seemingly made by OpenAI. In my eyes, this means that something could be right around the corner, but only time will tell. Now, if something is right around the corner, let's see how this chatbot is going to perform. First up, Alvaro Sintas here was 
able to have this model code a perfectly working snake game right out of the box, which is very impressive. In my personal experience, GPT-4 for me has struggled to make a basic game of Pong, let alone a fully functional snake game. It was also able to one-shot, meaning in one try, solve an international math olympiad problem. Now, this problem could be inside of its data set, which gives it a little bit of a leg up because it doesn't have to go through as much work, let's say, to solve the problem correctly. Regardless, though, it's pretty dang impressive and means that this model is no slouch. We've also got this model drawing AC art, essentially art created with keyboard text characters, better than Claude Opus. In this example, we ask it to draw a unicorn, and here it goes, it produces the unicorn outright. Where Claude 3 Opus, I don't even know what it drew here, but it definitely doesn't look like a unicorn. And by the way, this test right here was conducted by Sully Omar on Twitter, and if you scroll down here, you'll notice in comparison to Llama 3, Gemini 1.5 Pro, GPT-4 Turbo, Gemini right here totally bombs on this, Llama 3 even worse, GPT-4 is close but no cigar, Sully mentions GPT-4 Turbo gets it right sometimes, but GPT-2, this mysterious model, gets it right every single time. Here in another example, it goes ahead and passes the kilogram of feathers versus a kilogram of lead test, saying they both weigh exactly the same, a kilogram. Shockingly difficult test here for large language models, you'd be surprised. In Boris's test here, this thing denies being GPT-4, denies being GPT-4.5, or GPT-5. Anyways, guys, this is the website that everyone's been testing this thing out on. LM Sys, Chatbot Arena, benchmarking LLMs in the wild. You can do blind tests, which is pretty cool, or the direct chat, which obviously is how everyone's been able to test out this GPT-2 model. Now, I do have some bad news. You can see right here, GPT-2-Chatbot is currently unavailable. See our model evaluation policy here. So it seems like, according to their policy, maybe this GPT-2 dash chatbot was taken off by the large language model arena benchmark. Maybe it was taken down by the creators. Either way, it's a real shame because we were able to test it out a little bit yesterday, but now it seems like uh, it's no longer free for everyone to be amazed by. So it's just this weird mystery. Again though, guys, the AI space never seems to fail to pique my interest. Always some strange things going on. Regardless though, guys, I do recommend recommend you check out this first YouTube AI community stream that we did. Lots of recognizable faces here. Matthew Berman, Matt Wolf, Theoretically Media, The AI Advantage, ByCloud, and we'll have a rotating cast and hopefully twice a month we'll have these live streams. So I'll be linking this down below, but I do think that this is a great example of why the community should stick together. We have a say on how this technology goes and when we communicate, when we get together and chat, we can learn about these little things like this mysterious GPT-2 chatbot and we can experiment with it and figure out, hey, where did this thing come from and what is it capable of? More videos coming up very soon, lots of interesting things happening in the AI space, but I've been getting asked so much about this GPT-2 chatbot, I just wanted to put out a quick little video today kind of going over what's happening with it. I'll see you guys in the next one, thanks for watching.